Hello, and welcome to our Power Cappy Education Series. I'm Bruce Weil, and this module describes the inner workings of the IBM Coherent Accelerator Processor Interface, or CAPI for short. CAPI, available on power servers, enables applications to gain performance by speeding up runtime and data ingest on many types of algorithms. CAPI is most often used with FPGAs, which you can learn about separately in our What is an FPGA education video. IBM first introduced CAPI on Power 8 servers. This industry-leading technology makes it easier to create accelerated IP on FPGAs as compared to the standard method of PCIe-attached FPGAs. Differentiating attributes of CAPI include the direct sharing of host memory, giving the FPGA coherent access to the same data and address space as the application that calls it. More on that in just a moment. But CAPI also provides the capability to have multiple applications call for the same accelerator simultaneously. While other platforms allow just one application to own an FPGA resource at a time, Power's CAPI technology virtualizes the resource. And finally, as you would expect from an IBM server, CAPI provides robust reliability for the server and the running applications in case there's a problem in the accelerator. To illustrate how CAPI coherency works, let's first take a look at how things were done before CAPI. In this case, we're talking about a PCIe-attached FPGA, shown here on the right by a Xilinx UltraScale Plus chip. We show a single application running on one of six Power 8 cores and its virtual address space sitting in the real memory space. The application doesn't need to know where the real address is located. It just knows that it has its own memory space. For our example, let's say the FPGA contains a high-speed compression engine. In the PCIe-attached accelerator paradigm, the first thing that the application will do is set up variables to call the FPGA. The variables are stored in the virtual address space. The application then creates any input data for the accelerator. This data also goes into the virtual address space. Now we're ready to call the accelerator. But because the FPGA is a PCIe device, we must first call the device driver. The device driver now copies the variables and input data into its own virtual address space where the application cannot see the data. The device driver itself now calls the accelerator. It creates yet another copy of data when it sends it across the PCIe interface to the FPGA. Now the FPGA can finally start performing the compression algorithm and working on the data. As the compression algorithm finishes, it creates the output data and sends it back to the device driver, which is still playing middleman in this operation. Finally, the device driver copies the results back to the application's virtual address space, where the application can see the results. In the end, the PCIe paradigm had three separate copies of the data, which adds quite a bit of overhead to using the FPGA. Any changes the application might have made to the data are not seen by the FPGA, as copies are not coherent. Now let's look at the same use case, but with CAPI. We still have the application running on the Power 8 core, and it has the same virtual address space. But you'll also notice that there's a new piece of IP, the Power Service Layer, which resides on the FPGA. We color the PSL the same color as the memory subsystem because the cache in the PSL participates in all of the memory protocols of the server. This PSL acts just like the caches associated with each of the six cores. Just like in the PCIe case, the first action that the application performs is to create the variables and the input data. Now with CAPI, 
Unlike the PCIe paradigm, the application does not call the device driver. Instead, it calls the compression engine directly. Because the PSL cache has direct access to the input data and variables, the CAPI paradigm does not require any software to assist in getting the data to the FPGA. The compression engine just requests the data from the virtual address space, which it shares with the application. As the compression engine finishes, it creates the output data. It then commits these results to the virtual address space where the application can immediately use the data. So with CAPI, there is far less overhead, no device driver software running and making copies, and all of the data is coherently managed by the hardware at the speed of the electrons. Let's look at the implications on performance of this comparison between CAPI and PCIe attached FPGAs. In this diagram, we show the steps involved in the PCIe model on top compared to the CAPI model on the bottom. You see the typical PCIe IO model has steps for the device driver call and all of the data copying. The green box is the actual accelerator runtime which is the same in both methods. When you measure the device driver overhead, you see that there are thousands of instructions involved. On a three gigahertz power eight server, the total cost of the data prep and results put away is 13 microseconds. But with the CAPI model, the overhead is just a few hundred instructions totaling just one third of a microsecond. The difference in overhead is eye-opening. We plotted the performance of the same fast Fourier algorithm implemented in software, a PCIe-attached FPGA, and in CAPI. The baseline software hits 10.7 gigaflops performance. But because of the overhead in the PCIe model, the performance is actually less than half of the software. However, in the CAPI case, without the overhead, we more than double the performance of the software. In summary, here's a list of the CAPI innovations and what they mean to our partners and clients. First, the FPGA acts like another core in the server, participating in all of the memory coherency. Not only does this have the positive performance implication, but it also makes it easier to program the FPGA as the virtual addressing seen in the FPGA is the same as what the application uses. As with all power server innovations, CAPI has built-in security and data protections. Since FPGAs are meant to be programmed and reprogrammed, we may not always have the same level of trusted FPGA images, but the CAPI PSL serves as a barrier to prevent the algorithm from corrupting data not owned by the application. CAPI is also part of our growing open power ecosystem, enabling many different partners to create FPGA cards or even ASIC chips that coherently attach to the power server. This gives us huge flexibility to connect many kinds of I.O. at very high bandwidth. Finally, with virtualization built right into the CAPI architecture, multiple applications can share the accelerator with the hardware and PSL managing the context switching between the different requesters. All of these features serve to lower the barriers around acceleration. Let's dive deeper into how CAPI works. Pictured here is the Power8 processor core and an FPGA card. Without acceleration, we have an algorithm that solely runs on the processor core. In order to accelerate the algorithm, we will break it into two. The heavy duty computation portion will go on to the FPGA, while the setup and basic functions remain on the host. With CAPI, both portions will still have access to the same memory and data. You'll note that the FPGA card has a PCIe footprint. 
In this case, it's a PCIe Gen 3 by 8 card. CAPI commands, data, and controls are all tunneled over the PCIe interface, but the processor knows that this is a CAPI card and treats it differently than a standard PCIe card. Drilling a little deeper, we will now look at the hardware, firmware, and application layers in our CAPI-enabled server. Starting with the hardware controls, we have the processor core at the bottom. Moving up, we show the memory as a box that expands beyond the single chip. That's because we can cluster multiple chips together and share the same memory. Just above the memory is the CAP unit. CAP stands for Coherent Accelerator Processor Proxy. This hardware logic is key to CAPI. The CAP unit monitors all of the memory control bus signals on behalf of the accelerator card. It acts as the proxy for the accelerator and takes action whenever the memory control bus refers to data that resides in the accelerator. Therefore, the CAP unit knows the contents of all of the data residing in the accelerator. The CAP unit will also retrieve data from memory whenever the accelerator requests it. The CAP unit talks directly to the PCIe electrical protocol unit to tunnel CAPI commands across the interface. Moving up to the FPGA card, we have the Power Service Layer, or PSL. The PSL has three fundamental jobs. First, it has the local cache containing hot data for the accelerator. Second, the PSL performs address translation with the CAP unit so that the accelerator can use the same virtual addresses as the application that called it. Finally, the PSL provides server protection by preventing the accelerator from accessing data outside its space and by, by preventing the accelerator from bringing down the server. Next, we look at the operating system enablement. Our Linux Technology Center has upstream CAPI kernels to Ubuntu, Red Hat, and other Linux distributions to enable CAPI. The library kernel is called libcxl. libcxl allows your application to communicate with the accelerator. It includes commands to start an accelerator and to point the accelerator to work queues created by the application. The final component is the Application and the Accelerator Function Unit, or AFU for short. The Accelerator image is loaded into the FPGA, usually by the server administrator. The application creates any data needed for the accelerator and then calls it. The data reference is simply a virtual address owned by the application. From there, the accelerator can access the data across the CAPI bus. As it works on data and generates results, data can be locally cached in the PSL where the application can access it. In addition, the accelerator can push interrupts and messages to the application or can set registers for the application to access via memory mapped I.O. commands. All of this activity is managed at very low latency because of all the special purpose hardware that runs at the speed of the electrons. The hardware manages the coherent data on the PSL on the FPGA, just like data on any of the core's local caches. Coupled with our CAPI developer kits and CAPI Snap for programmers, this infrastructure makes it easy and efficient to utilize FPGA acceleration. Here's a photo of a Power8 server with the CAPI cards installed in the PCIe slots. This server is an S822L 2U 2 socket server. It can hold up to four CAPI cards, two on the back left and two on the back right. Each CAPI card can be separately configured with different AFUs. I hope this video has helped you understand how CAPI works. 
you can find deeper information at ibm.biz slash powercapi. This includes links to developer kits, information on CAPI Snap, and a list of CAPI accelerators and solutions.